literature i must apologize to you for being away for a good length of time i was away because i wasn't so well however i am on the mend and back with chapter 24 for you all right i saw some questions but i will address them after the reading all right so we're gonna get into chapter 24 of breath eyes a memory by of course edwige dantica <sighs> three days later my mother came when i first caught a glimpse of her she was sitting on the back of a cart being pulled by two teenage boys eliab raced to the yard grabbed my grandmother's hand and yanked her towards the road my mother was shielding her face from us hiding behind a red umbrella my grandmother followed Eliab to the edge of the road. That lady, Eliab said, pointing at the umbrella guarding my mother's face. That lady, she says she belongs to you. Tante T was in the yard boiling some water for our morning coffee. She got up quickly when my grandmother started screaming my mother's name. Min Martin! Tololo! Tololo! Eliab chimed in as though it was his long-lost mother who had come back. My grandmother grabbed her broom and speared it in the ground to anchor herself. My mother folded the red umbrella and laid it on top of a large suitcase on the cart next to her. Some of the road vendors gathered around her to say hello. My mother kissed them on the cheek and stroked their children's heads. They looked curiously at her cerise jumper ballooned around her small frame. My grandmother was trembling on the spot where she was standing. Tanta T put her hands on her hips and stared ahead. She did not look the least bit surprised. A plantain green scarf floated in the breeze behind my mother. She skipped through the dust and rushed across the yard. Eliab circled around her like a wingless butterfly. My mother walked over and kissed my grandmother. Tantati moved slowly towards her, not particularly excited. My mother was glowing. Tantati tapped her lips against my mother's cheeks, then went back to fanning the cooking sticks with my grandmother's hat. Sat passe, Ati? asked my mother. You, answered Tanta T, fanning the flames. You're what's new. I clung to the porch railing as my anchor. It had been almost two years since the last time we saw each other. My mother's skin was unusually light, a pale mocha, three or four shades lighter than any of ours. Bridget's body tightened as though she could sense the tension in mine. I see you still wear the day, my mother said to my grandmother. It is all the same, answered my grandmother. The black is easier. It does not get dirty. Mondo, you do not look bad for an old lady, said my mother. And you have been talking about arranging your funeral like it was tomorrow. Your skin looks lighter, said my grandmother. Is it Broadway? You use something. My mother looked embarrassed. It is very cold in America, my mother said. The cold turns us into ghosts. Papa Shango, the sun here will change that, my grandmother said. I am not staying long enough for that, my mother said. When I got your telegram, I decided to come and see Sophie and take care of your affairs at the same time. I plan to stay for only three days. This is not the visit I owe you. This is just circumstance. When I come again, I will stay with you for a very long time. I watched her from the railing, waiting for her to look over and address me personally. She looks very young and thin, but for the most part healthy. Because the room is size of her jumper, I couldn't tell whether or not she was wearing her prosthetic bra. Sophie, walk to your mother, said my grandmother. 
They were all staring at me, even Eliel. My mother put her hands in her pockets. She narrowed her eyes as she tried to see my face through the sun's glare. Bridget began to twist in my arms. She sensed something. Sophie, walk to your mother. My grandmother's voice grew more forceful. My mother looked uncomfortable, almost scared. I did not move. We stared at each other across the yard, each waiting for the other to yield. As her daughter, I was expected to walk over and greet her first. However, I did not trust my legs. I wasn't sure I could make it down the steps without slipping and hurting both myself and Bridget. Walk to your mother. My grandmother was becoming angry. It is okay, my mother said, coming towards me. I will walk to her. She climbed onto the porch and kissed me on the cheek. Bridget reached up to grab a large loop earring on my mother's right lobe. You didn't send word you were coming, I said. Let me see her, she said, extending her hands for Bridget. Bridget leaned forward. I let her slip into my mother's grasp. How old is she now? She asked. Almost six months. She made funny faces at Bridget. I got all the pictures you sent me, she said. Why didn't you answer? I couldn't find the words, she said. How are you? I've been better. She went back to the yard to pay the cart boys and took Bridget with her. You're not staying here, are you? She asked when she came back to the porch. She tickled Bridget's armpits as she spoke giggling along with her. I reached for my daughter. She pressed Bridget's body against her chest and would not give her back. Mama asked me to come here and make things better between us. It is not right for a mother and daughter to be enemies. Mama thinks it puts a curse on the family. Besides, your husband came to see me and I could not refuse him. You've seen him? Oh, the flames in your eyes. How is he? Worried. I told him we would be back in three days. You can't make plans for me. I did. We were speaking to one another in English without realizing it. All oh, that cling clang talk, interrupted my grandmother. It sounds like glass breaking. Bridget was pulling at my mother's earrings. My mother took them off and handed them to me. You and I, we started wrong, my mother said. You are no woman with your own house. We are allowed to start again. The mid-morning sky looks like an old quilt with long bands of red and indigo spreading their way past drifting clouds. Like everything else, eventually, even the rainbows disappear. <sighs> all right all right so that is uh, that is it for chapter 24 we are now seeing that martin has left the u.s and has returned to haiti for a short visit three days um she is here it seems to make amends um make amends for the rift that exists between uh, sophie and If there exists between she and Sophie, she is here at her mother's urging to see if she can make amends. Well, we, we are going to move on to chapter 25 to see what happens there. Thank you for staying until the end of this video as usual. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like, share, click that notification bell so each time I post a video you are notified back.